Ciao. Simon Ice everywhere. Instant Simon Ice. They thought of it too. Simon Ice thinks of everything. I'll let people know about. Uh, yeah, because sure. now's your chance. I, You're on. Mike Rose is here with us, everybody, uh, at Twitter, on Twitter, in Twitter. He is at Mike T. Rose. I, I jumped, a, <laughs> jumped the gun with the at part. At Mike T. Rose on Twitter. Uh, this is your uh, this is your soapbox, sir. Is there something else you want to let people know about? I'm I'm going to let people know about three things on behalf of my friends because I want to I want to add friends and family that I want to advocate for. Uh, friend number one, the aforementioned or mentioned earlier this week, Kelly Gamont, my co-host on the After Show. She is also the host. In addition to being the host of several things, she is the co-host of a podcast on the Incomparable Network called. Uh, uh, Maximoff Overdrive uh, about uh, WandaVision, but they are expanding the show to be about more than WandaVision. They kind of uh, have to, wouldn't they? They they do kind of have to, <laughs> and they're they're covering all of the MCU. Uh, so they're covering all the MCU TV shows. Okay, and and they're going to keep doing that uh, with with the subsequent shows. So uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, the 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 next round of Marvel television Loki. and so Loki Loki, Loki, is the next Loki, one. Is the next one. Loki is the next one. So I suggested they they don't they don't necessarily want to keep the title of Maximoff Overdrive because that's specific to WandaVision. I suggested free to be MCU and me. Um, <laughs> and it's like it's it's for it's for people of a certain age. No, yeah. like not gonna lie. But uh, but I thought that was pretty good. So that's one thing I want to plug is um, Maximoff Overdrive over at the Incomparable Network. Uh, second thing I want to mention is uh, my friend uh, Kelly, uh, other Kelly, as we refer to him, uh, Kelly O'Coin, um, who is a performer and an actor, and he also is one of the uh, one of the stars of the Showtime series Billions. Um, they are going back to work. So just 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 now, just in the past week or so, they have resumed shooting on the um, the unplanned hiatus of their sixth season. Hmm. Um, so for fans of the show, heads up, Billions will be back on your television pretty soon. They're very excited. So good luck to the cast and crew there. Stay safe. And lastly, this is really a very early uh, pre-plug, but um, my, my daughter is going to be on Twitch soon. Uh, she's starting her streaming channel. So if you would like to see uh, someone playing Undertale and The Witcher and other games and telling, hopefully giving funny commentary, you can check out my daughter's uh, Twitch channel. So I'm going to promote that. All right. So I got the thing that I want to talk to you about. And really, I just kind of want to, I kind of want to vent, not vent exactly, but I'm having a difficult time with uh, with big tech's relationship with government and vice versa. Mm. Um, so it's come out that the UK is going to be looking into, um, uh, the whole app store thing. Um, as far as Apple is concerned, uh, the EU is apparently going to be filing charges may have, by the time people hear this, going to be filing anti, uh, charges of anti-competitive behavior against Apple because of the way Apple music is positioned in the Apple ecosystem. Um, there was another one. I can't remember what it was. Oh yes. It was Tim Wu. Being named to uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, named one of the advisors to the Biden administration, uh, mm-hmm. Tim Wu, who has been uh, kind of a proponent of uh, breaking up big tech, and I'm kind of wondering, like I was thinking, well, not to get political, there is nothing about the last administration that I miss. <laughs> There's pretty much just <laughs> nothing about the last administration that I miss, except I started thinking he did have all of those tech people that he was talking to. And then I was like, no, don't, don't, don't even do that. Don't fool yourself. I know that there's a picture of him with Jeff Bezos and with Tim Cook, but really the last president was a trophy hunter. He liked having big business sitting next to him because then it made him feel like a big businessman. Now there are some people who would have been happy being president, but really what he was interested in was looking good to people that he thinks look good. And, you know, I apologize if that's too political for you, but I don't remember a whole lot coming out of, like, the tech side of the last administration. I feel fairly confident saying what I just said. So mm-hmm. either we had an administration that was, for the most part, ignoring tech, unless there was a way for, you know, it to look good for him to be paying attention, or we've got what we've got now, which seems to me to be almost like a reactionary, like, 
we got to stop big tech without talking to big tech or really, you know, sort of getting big tech side of stuff. Now, the problem that I have is I've been doing this for 15 years. And so I've been reading a bunch of tech stuff, you know, for those 15 years. And I think I kind of get this, like they talked about on sports night, nobody beats up my kid brother, but me. (laughs) Tech is not my kid brother, but I feel like there are certain politicians who are like, well, this will get a headline. And so they go for it. I'm having trouble... I'm having trouble with the whole oversight and tech thing. I believe that big business does need oversight. I do believe that business, I mean, it needs to have an eye kept on it because I think left to its own devices, it will run rampant. I'm curious what your thoughts are on uh, on oversight and tech today. Whew, that's a, wow. Um, so this is a, this is a little touchy, uh, for me, so I'm going to speak in generalities um, okay. <laughs> because of because of a day job. Um, I, I I do think that you know first of all there there was a lot of there was a lot of noise in the previous administration about um, re you know revisiting the idea of of tech regulation or reeling in reeling in big tech somewhat. I I think a lot of that you know was was political noise, but the 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 nugget sort of at the core of it is is reflecting that there are some problems with the with having so much power concentrated in certain companies like AT and T or pre 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 breakup Ma Bell mm-hmm. um, and and it, but it's harder to find a really an antitrust reason to, to do this. It's much more about like, what is the social benefit or what is the, what's the social contract with these, with these companies? Um, Facebook, Facebook has problems. Like Facebook is problematic on many, many levels Mm -hmm. and is in some ways complicit in exacerbating societal problems for profit. Um, I, you know, people have said Facebook is like, cigarettes uh you know it, it's and i say that as someone who uses it and i enjoy it but i recognize that it is not only bad for me but probably bad for the world um google amazon or the the the, the fang companies uh, uh facebook apple uh amazon netflix and google fang um the concentrated power of those of those industries of those companies all of which are, are, you know, American founded or American headquartered companies, um, it creates, exacerbates inequality, exacerbates societal problems, exacerbates misinformation and disinformation. Um, the, the challenge for any sort of regulatory framework is what do you, like, what do you do? You're, you're only, you have relatively few legitimate governmental interests in in this domain. You can say when someone is polluting, whether it's you know physical pollution or information pollution, you can go after them. When they're when they're creating economic inequality or you know or operational inequality of such a scale that it becomes a problem. Like I mean, basically, Congress can make any sort of law that it wants, but there has to be a, there should be a rationale for going after and, and regulating these industries in a way that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Personally, I I think the two that are sort of highest on the list are Facebook and Amazon for very different reasons. Yeah. Um, Amazon, because it, it, you know, like Walmart, like Target, like um, very, very few other sort of consumer facing companies it's got so much economic clout that it has to be there need to be some guardrails so that it doesn't inadvertently do tremendous damage um and facebook because as as previously stated facebook is is toxic in a way that a democracy may not be able to tolerate over the long term we've already seen it you know in in myanmar and other parts of the world we've seen facebook you know, lead to actual physical harm and death for 
for for communities that are targeted. We really do not want that to continue, and we definitely don't want it to get worse here in the United States. How do you make that not happen? How do you help the how, like? What is the if, even if the company said we'll accept any regulation, we'll accept any set of rules, we want to make this stop, which isn't clear, by the way. It's not clear from from Facebook's leadership or from the from the internal. Uh, deliberations of the company that we've heard that that's that that is a you know a north star but assume it was what are you going to do to the way that company works to make it not poisonous in the way that it is now what is the fix because without without some strong idea some sort of provable approach to a regulatory framework that is going to help uh it, you know it's not clear what government can do i think part of the problem that i have too and i the thing that i constantly need to check myself on and i have trouble with it because i can never be certain whether i'm actually checking myself correctly or not when they had facebook amazon apple and google on the hill for that one hearing and when they had spent the past year and a half before that investigating those four companies as if they're the same thing i mean if you want to if you want to investigate you know gm and ford those are two yeah. car companies even there though one of them is going to be run one way another one is going to be run another way but at the very least they're both two car companies so you can start by saying okay well they're two car companies Facebook does something very different than Amazon, which does something very different than Apple, which does something very different than Google, which does something, I would say probably Facebook and Google are the two that are closest together in that, maybe, but I'm not 100% certain that that's the case. But either way, I mean, just to look at them at all, all and go, well, it's all tech. I mean, probably the best way to do it is who on Capitol Hill thinks that uh, Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell are the same guy? <laughs> right? They both led the Senate. They both lead their parties in the Senate, but they're they're wildly different people. And you wouldn't say, well, leaders in the Senate are all exactly the same. I mean, they would actually say they're completely different. But then you look at the four big tech companies, and cute of you, by the way, to keep including Netflix in that. I understand why you do, because <laughs> otherwise it spells something that you can't say out loud. But it's not, it's not, although actually, it's actually Facebook, Apple, Amazon, uh, alphabet now, so it'll just be fa <laughs> <laughs> with no N there at the end, I think. But um, or I mean, alpha. Or, or, oh sure, that'd be fine. <laughs> sure, or alpha, either one. <laughs> just have to really know. Or ah. Well, maybe I mean you could put you could put Microsoft <laughs> in there at the end and be then it's fam. You know, <laughs> that's true. Which I think we kind of lost the point now, though. Yeah. No. So oh my I mean, there's the whole thing of just I, I don't, and I don't know if it's this aw shucks thing that people have always done about technology. Like you know, you'll occasionally still run into somebody who's like, "Well, I don't know anything about technology," and it's like, "Well, do you live, you know, in the 21st century?" Because even if you think you don't know something about technology, you kind of do. I mean, yeah. it seems to me to be an oversimplification to say, "Well, you know, big tech is big tech," so let's, uh, you know. We'll use this one stick to beat all of them. It, it, well, I think the thing that that the companies have in common is their their disproportionate power over uh, civic life and <laughs> what's going on. Um, but I mean, I, I agree. I take your point. Like GM and Ford, you know, GM is a finance company in addition to a car company in a way that Ford really is not. Well, um, that Ford isn't anymore. I mean, they anyway. Go uh, ahead. I apologize. They they well, had no, no, a huge he, finance arm because I knew somebody who worked for them and nearly moved right. to Dearborn, so they could keep working for them. Yeah, they did. I mean, I mean, maybe maybe they. Well, I know. I'm pretty sure they sold that. Anyway, this is neither here nor there. <laughs> your 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 point is that you know car companies are all alike in a certain way. Um, and the the bad they're they're when they are bad actors insert you know volkswagen diesel uh, emissions scandal yeah uh, the ways that they do that are you know their their maliciousness or their bad behavior is transparently explicable for the most part um when tech companies behave badly um it's super hard to dig into. And I mean, 
for me, and again, I have to be I have to be reasonably circumspect about this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think the thing that is so interesting about how Amazon uh, plays in all in this in this sandbox is that with the exception of the other five companies, <laughs> um, almost every other technology company on the planet has a supplier relationship with Amazon. Hmm. Not because they buy, you know, pa- reams of paper and uh, window cleaner from Amazon, because Amazon is what keeps their services running. Amazon Web Services, like if it were its own company, would would just would be a transparently super, super, super influential and super important uh, thing to to be talking about from a regulatory perspective, if only because of the national security and infrastructure resiliency implications that AWS runs the Internet, big, big, big chunks of the Internet. Yeah. So if so, we 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 need to have a conversation about that, um, and how how transparent or how possible it is to be, you know, an informed populace about how that works. I mean, again, I know a reasonable amount about that, and I don't know, like I don't know what where things are going to go wrong. I can't. So. I feel like I feel like there's, you know, we need to be able to, to make sure the companies are are behaving fairly and being being fair competitors and not, you know, making neighbors want to kill one another. That's sort of that's sort of table stakes. But then, then we have a second second layer of, you know, now we have these these complicated economic and operational interactions that mostly have to do with AWS. So maybe we need to have a conversation about that. That's not that's not so fraught with the Amazon labor practices and Amazon competitive with other retailers and Amazon, you know, making clones of people's products. Like there's a lot of Amazon as Amazon Mm -hmm. that is worth having conversation about. Great. But we need to have a separate conversation about AWS because it is um, it, it is an existential service for so many other companies. Uh, that is not that's not transparent like people don't many many people who would be having these regular who would have an opinion about these regulations don't have that awareness about how aws plays in the mix mm-hmm.